Hi, and welcome to review time at Mike's Electric Stuff. Today we're going to be reviewing this wonderful Dynamco uh, benchtop digital voltmeter. Latest state-of-the-art technology. Five digits, side-lit incandescent displays, um, nice chunky switches, range goes up to 2,000 volts. We've got our mains inlet, um, an external input for an external reference, um, digital output, but unfortunately not USB compatible. Right, let's take a closer look around this unit. Here we've got the front panel, we've got adjustments for positive, zero and negative calibration. Our input socket, this is a shielded two, two pole, um, of course the connector it is extra, they charge extra for that. Um, we've got um, internal voltage and external ratio to an external voltage reference mode, nice drinking off switch. Old uh, mullard electrometer valves here at the front end, good high precision stuff. Nice sort of thick silicone cable in there for low leakage. Um, with a couple of these electromagnetic um, chopper units here. Um, all good stuff, high quality, all screwed in, these nice nice stands. All the PCBs clamped in nicely. Nice modern transistors here, you can see. Um, mains input voltage selector down there in steps of um, 10 volts. Um, coming around the side, here's our Western Standard um, voltage reference. Um, for our internal calibration. Um, some more stuff here, there's actually uh, another valve in there. But almost all transistorized, so really up to date, really modern design we've got here. Quick look at the underside here. Beautiful wiring looms, just look at that. Neatly tied and bundled, absolutely lovely. And here we've got the switch, ceramic rotary switches. Great big resistor, that'll be the uh, input divider for the 2kV range. The input silicone cables again, because these could have 2kV on them. Um, high precision resistors, all on tag board. So this is the back plane for the, um, all the cards. All the wires going down to sort of solder posts. All looped out, exactly the same amount, all individually coloured. They don't make things like this anymore. Right, a little bit more detail inside. We've got these nice cages full of cards on PCBs. These are uh, germanium GET8809 transistors. Nice gold-plated GET897s. Nice hand-rooted PCBs, of course. None of your auto-rooted rubbish. This one says double-digit bi-stable, so there's going to be some digital logic on there. Diodes, transistors. Um, this looks like it's a digit driver, a sort of BCD to decimal driver or something. There's four of these that look pretty much the same. And some little details in here. Here we've actually got a little calibration certificate for the voltage reference. Uh, 21st of March 1967. And down here we've got the... these are sort of choppers which are like sort of very high speed read relays. So I think this whole thing works a bit like a sort of chopper amplifier, but with a mechanical chopper instead of analog switches. And if you look at the actual sockets here, they use PTFE sockets for low leakage. So here we've got two Mullard electrometer valves, which are valves designed for high impedance uh, measurement. Um, the leads are actually fairly thick insulation, they're actually shielded as well. Um, that's probably a guard signal as well to avoid leakage. So this is all high impedance, high precision stuff. Um, and no doubt very, very expensive at the time. Again, nice cable looms. OK, we'll just check what state the voltage reference is in. Um, the normal voltage of this is 1.019 volts. So we'll just see what we get. 1.0198. Now, considering this is about 47 years old, I think that's not bad long-term stability. In case you've never seen one before, what's inside these cells. Um, it's a chemical battery reference cell called a Western Standard Cell. Here's another one very similar that came out of a similar instrument to this. And basically what's in here, there's some um, shielding I've taken off here. But it's basically a chemical cell. There's two different um, mercury metal alloys in here and there's like a little bridge across there um, that provides the, the uh, connection between the two um, to produce an electrolytic battery. 
Um, I've got another example here. This is a sort of like a laboratory standard um, version where we've got a number of different cells. Um, so you can take the average of several for sort of uh, reference reading. Um, this is another beautifully made piece of kit, and you can see at the bottom you see the mercury amalgam in here and the supply of chemicals. If you just look up Western Cell uh, on the internet, I'm sure you can find more detail. Okay, let's fire it up and see what happens. Now it's taking a little, uh, little while to boot up. Um, of course, back in the 60s they used to use the word warming up because of the valve filaments, but same effect, so let's let it uh, settle down. It seems to fairly consistently come up with 3.99 when it starts up, so here we go, it's just settling down. Let's give it a little while. I would imagine the manual probably recommend you leave it on for half an hour or something to stabilise, but um, it seems to have zeroed itself, so the, the input selector is on calibrate zero, so we can set our zero point, which is close up. Now we calibrate the positive side. Each of these red indicators show positive voltage. Um, for some reason they didn't use a plus minus. So we set a positive, which is, we know that reference is 1.019. So we set that to be right. And our negative reference, 1.019. Okay, so now we can try and measure. I've just got the flute connected just as a comparison. So we just um, I'll, put, I'll put the filter on here, so um, that's a bit slow, try that one. Um, we'll just a voltage source, so let's... I'm putting minus two... minus two volts, no damn it. So minus 2.007 on the fluke, 2.0035, not too far out I suppose for something this age. Um, let's try a different range. Let's go down to the 400 millivolt range. So 1478, yeah, 147, not bad. Um, and we can change the resolution. This is one means um, single count. If I flick it up to five, then you see that that's only going in steps of five. So it just reduces the resolution a little bit. And there's various different acquisition mode. It's got min max. So for example, if I put it on max mode, it will just update whenever it increases. I'll increase the voltage, it holds the maximum. I'll just clear it with this button. Um, <coughs> there's a single shot mode, just manually single sampled. Um, and I think also what also does, it sets a threshold, um, so it only up, because you, you notice in normal mode it's, the display gets quite flickering because of the reaction time of the incandescent bulbs. When the display is moving quickly, the digits just disappear pretty much. So I think what this is about is. Um, it only updates the display when it sees a certain amount of change. So if I stick it all the way there, a fairly small, wonderful resolution, a fairly small update makes the display change. If I stick it on full, then it's only updating when the, when this digit's changing. So you can adjust that so you get a nice bright display, even if you've got a little bit of noise on the input. Just to get a bit more resolution on that. 1.446, 1.446, not bad, after 40, however many years, 43 years old. Okay, so what are our conclusions? Good points, fabulous build quality, really nicely made, top quality components, nice, really nice looking display, nice glowy, warm feeling display. Um, amazing long-term reliability, 43 years old, still working fine. But you've got to really think about the, the, the downsides here. Manual ranging, no USB interface, DC only, no AC measurements, no resistance, no current measurements, not even a continuity beeper. Guys, what are you thinking? Oh.